how is that FSD doing for you today? You know, I haven't driven it yet today, but I am planning to drive it out into uh, the more dense part of L.A. I'm going to the Cheesecake Factory at the Grove. And so I'll be driving from uh, the South Bay area of L.A. where my parents live to West Hollywood and to the Grove. So we'll get to see more testing in um, L.A. I'll record some videos there. But my videos yesterday here in the more suburban South Bay area, uh, they were all zero intervention. Uh, there was a little bit of rolling some stop signs in the Terranea sort of parking lot area. They weren't like real stop signs. It kind of like went down to six for some of them, stop for some of them. But uh, overall, I think it's uh, looking exceptional. There's a little bit of hesitation sometimes when I wish it would go faster when it... Uh, you know, it's clear and it's just sort of waiting. So I think that's one area that they could improve on too. But overall, I think it's looking pretty good and I'm excited for the next build that I hear is coming. Any updates on when the next build might be coming? Well, I'm hoping this weekend or next weekend. And that could be accompanied with an expansion to more early access testers. So that's something that I'm looking forward to as well. I'm looking forward to, for example, you know, Chuck trying his left turn in Florida and people all around the country trying it because I tried it in San Francisco and L.A. It looks pretty good, but I'm interested to really see how it works across the country. So it's not like that bad that early access testers can't handle it. So I would send it out to the early access testers with the next build. I think that's what they're going to do. And um yeah, that, that should be coming up pretty shortly. I think it was supposed to come maybe last weekend. Uh, it's the point thirteen build. We did see it surface on Tesla Scope and, and Tesla Fi. But um, the recall and needing to make some of those changes kind of delayed that slightly. But it should be going out hopefully uh, in the coming weeks, this week or next weekend. Is there any specific edge case in downtown LA, the busier part of LA that you said uh, that it used to struggle with the V11 that you're looking forward to testing? Well, generally it has done pretty good in LA, not perfect, but there's definitely a lot of moments that sort of made me sweat or you know, felt kind of uncomfortable, uh, jerking back and forth in like dense LA traffic, that type of stuff. I mean, in LA, it's very different than San Francisco. San Francisco, you've got hills, you got people, you got a road that goes straight up or straight down, but you don't really have that much traffic unless you're like trying to get in or out of the city. But in LA, you have a lot of traffic and people who are just angry that they're in traffic. So you see people just do crazy, crazy things um, just to, you know, get out of the situation that they're in. So it can be a little bit unpredictable, and it'll be interesting to see how FSD Beta 12 handles that. It seems to be much more natural about handling others, handling other cars, handling other pedestrians. One moment that I really like that I called out was I was making a U-turn on FSD Beta 12 yesterday, which honestly is amazing in itself that it can make a U-turn so well now. But as I was making a U-turn, a guy just started running out in front of the car and it didn't slam on the brakes or anything like that. It just slowly continued moving forward, just a little bit slower, but it knew it was slow enough that it wasn't going to go anywhere near him. And so it just continued making that U-turn without stopping. Eleven would have slammed on the brakes. It would have felt like a slap in the face, you know, even though it was probably going to be nowhere close to hitting him. But 12 was just smooth. It just stayed the course. And um, that's kind of the general theme. It's just so much more natural at how it interacts with other cars and pedestrians. So it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, when I record the video later today and publish it later tonight, how it does in the much more challenging area of Los Angeles. Meanwhile, Waymo hit a cyclist in San Francisco. It sounds like the cyclist is okay, luckily. Um, minor scratches, so that's good. It seems like it was a low-speed incident in the Portero Hill neighborhood. And um, it, I don't think their permit's going to get pulled over this. If you remember, Cruz's permit really got pulled over the lying 
It wasn't the accident. It was the lying. After that, I don't think Waymo is going to lie. I expect them to be fully transparent. And I don't expect this to be a pull the permit kind of moment based on what I'm seeing. The person who was hit seems to be fine. The passenger seems to be fine. I wouldn't be surprised if they sued Waymo or something just because they could probably get a huge settlement. But, um, you know, it seems like everything is kind of okay. We can't really expect self-driving cars to have zero accidents. All we can really hope for is that they dramatically bring down the rate of accidents. And Waymo's done some good independent studies with insurance companies and others that um, suggest that 80% of injury causing crashes are reduced by self-driving cars. And I believe them. You can just see based on how it drives. It just drives much more carefully than a human would. Almost, you know, too carefully, really. So uh, that's that's kind of interesting uh, story that came out that happened Tuesday evening. But it may sort of internally affect the leadership's thinking in terms of their rate of expansion. Right now, they're open to the public in one market, which is the Phoenix metro area. And they're invite only in San Francisco and Los Angeles. So they are expanding. Hopefully, at some point, they're actually able to open to the public in San Francisco and L.A. But, um, you know, the management's very cautious. They're not aggressive at all the way that Elon is or the way that Cruz seem to be. They're very kind of like, look, if this takes 50 years, whatever. So I could see this kind of incident maybe uh, slowing them down a little bit potentially. And I'm interested to see more footage of the incident or anything else that can kind of um, suggest what the problem is, right? Because, you know, just going back to the perception discussion, right? This is the big thing. Do you need LIDAR or do you not? And what this incident really shows is you need intelligence to avoid hitting people. Your perception is actually, you can have a, a range of perception capability and probably achieve autonomy. But what you need is the intelligence to say, okay, this truck is passing me, but I need to make sure there's nobody behind the truck, right? So again, you can have this great perception system, but LiDAR can't go through a truck, right? Only intelligence can make you understand that there could be someone behind that truck. Thank you, Omar. We have a question for you in the replies. If anybody has any questions for a request to speak, or you may leave a reply below the X space or in YouTube comments. The question from Dominus Ignota is, how does FSD do with road debris? It tries to go around it. It's been raining here. There are, is a lot of debris in the road. So it will actually go around debris in the road. Does a good job with that. Have you seen faster iterations over V12 that what you saw previously? This first V12 build is obviously a dramatic step ahead of V11, but it's the only build I've received. So I don't have any idea of what the rate of iteration is going to be between V12 builds. Maybe after this next one comes, I can tell you, but right now I've got one data point. Ethan DeVry asks in the replies, does V12 handle speed bumps well? 11.4.9 still likes to blow it right through them. Yeah, it's a day and night difference on speed bumps. It handles every speed bump and it goes at a much more proper speed. And it can actually vary the speed depending on the shape and size of the speed bump. So if you have an issue with speed bumps, this is going to be a dream come true for you. Also slows for like dips in the road and puddles. There were some puddles in the road. It slowed for the puddles. And that like you can see that in the video uh, I did with my dad. I think it might still be pinned to my profile. And there's a little highlight in there. If you tap the tweet, you can see all the highlights. And then there's one where it slows down for a puddle. So it can literally see a puddle in the road and just lower its speed slightly. Not like too much, but the proper amount. It's really good. And this is the benefit of the end-to-end -end system, right? So with the old architecture, we'd have to say, okay, now we need to train a puddle detector. Now we need to train a dip detector. Now we need to train a speed bump detector. And you have to manually think of all the things that people could possibly slow for. 
and then try and train a detector for it and curate that data set. Okay, we need bigger puddles, smaller puddles. What a fucking nightmare, right, for the team. No wonder they didn't add all this stuff. Now you just say, hey, just look at the video and figure out why people slow. And just look at all the reasons people slow. And kind of come up with a general model for it. And we don't have to explain to you what things people slow for. You just look at the data. It's like, boom, light bulb.